Tao overflows. Witnessing leads to no mind. Patience is the secret key along a spiritual path. There is no shortcuts along the path. Therefore, there is no need to be impatient. Be patient. Existence needs immense patience. You have to do your total efforts. That is in your hand. But the result is not in your hand. It will depend on the process. So the ultimate mysteries are open only to those who have immense patience and trust. Patience is the seed of sex. Patience is the seed of trust. Trust is trust and patience are two feet to walk along the inner path. This is the secret how witnessing leads to no mind. Witnessing is the seed and no mind is the flowering. But both are two shores, are two sides of the process that we know as meditation. <coughs> meditation begins with witnessing and in the final analysis when witnessing attains to its totality, the same witnessing becomes no mind. Witnessing is the seed that has to be planted in the fertilized soil and no mind is the blossoming of that seed or the announcement of the season of a spring. Now you know the secret. You have the master key which can open every moment into the glimpse of no mind. No mind is the final stage. When mind disappears forever, mind means conditioning. Mind is not any tangible thing. It is the sum total of memory, egocentric identities, intellect, the aggregate of all this is the mind. When you are no more guided by the memory or the egocentric identities or conditioning, then you attain to the state of no mind. When mind disappears forever, and thoughtlessness appears, gap becomes more intrinsic, gap becomes your intrinsic reality. If these few glimpses are coming, they show you that you are on the right path and you are using the right technique. But do not be impatient. Existence needs immense patience. The ultimate mysteries are open only to those who have immense patience. In Tibet, it was a customary, respectful, that every family would contribute to the great experiment of expanding consciousness. So the first child of each family was to be sent to the monasteries to be trained in meditation. 
perhaps no other country has done such a vast experiment in consciousness but the destruction of destruction of tibet in the hands of communist china and ignorant silence of indian prime minister maulana nehru is one of the greatest calamities that could have happened to humanity it is not only a question of a small country really the question is of great experiment that was going on for centuries in tibet that was destroyed with the exile of the tibetan dalai lama because of china and the silence of the then indian government the first child was given to the monasteries when he was very small almost 5 or 6 years of age but tibet knew that children can learn witnessing better than grown ups grown ups are already utterly spoiled the child is innocent and yet the state of his mind is empty therefore to teach the emptiness to the child is absolutely easy but the entrance of a child into the monastery was very difficult particularly for a small child i am reminded of one incident i am telling you of one incident there would have been hundreds of incidents like this it is bound to be so a small child 6 years of age was leaving his parents mother was crying because life in the monastery for a small child is going to be arduous the father tells the child do not look back it is a question of our family's respectability not even once a child in the whole history of our family ever looked back whatever is the test to be given for the entrance into the monastery even if your life is at risk do not look back do not think of me or your mother or her tears we are sending you for the ultimate experiment in human consciousness for the benefit of humanity with great joy although the separation is painful but we know you will pass through every test you are our blood and of course you will keep the dignity of the family the small child rides the horse with a servant riding on another horse tremendous desire arises in him when the road turns just to have a second look towards the family house and the garden the father must be standing there the mother will be crying but he remembers that the father had said do not look back and he does not look back at all with tears in his eyes he turns with the road now he cannot see the house any more and one never knows how long it will take perhaps years and years until he will be able to see his parents and family again he reaches the monastery at the gate of the monastery the abbot greets him receives him with respectability as if he is a grown up bows down to him and he bows down to the abbot the abbot says your first test will be to sit outside the gate with eyes closed unmoving 
until you are called in. The small child sits at the gate, outside the gate with eyes closed, hours passed, and he cannot even move. There are flies sitting on his face and he cannot remove them. It is a question of the dignity that the abbot was abbot has shown to him. He does not think any more like a child so respected. He does not fulfill the families. He has to fulfill the family's longing, the abbot's expectation. Two things, family's longing and abbot's expectations. The whole day passes. And even other monks in the monastery start feeling sorry for the child, hungry and thirsty. He is simply waiting. They started feeling that the child is a small but has great courage and guts. Finally, by the time the sun is setting, the whole day has passed, the abbot comes and takes the child inside. He says, you have passed the first test, but there are many more peaks ahead. I respect your patience which is very important along the path. Being such a small child, you remained unmoving, you did not open your eyes, you did not lose courage, and you trusted that whenever the time is right, you will be called in. This is one of the greatest message and secret for patience. When the time is right, things happen. Lao Tse says, grass grows by itself. You have to do the effort, but you cannot force the grass to grow. Once a man is in the state of no mind, nothing can distract him from his being. There is no power bigger than that of no mind. No harm can be done to such a person. No attachment, no greed, no jealousy, no anger. Nothing can arise in him. No mind is absolutely a pure sky without any clouds. Then comes the years of training and witnessing. The child was only allowed to see his parents again after perhaps 10 or 20 years have elapsed. But the criteria was that until he experiences the state of no mind, he cannot be allowed to see his parents his family. Once he achieves no mind, there would be no distractions of any kind. Then he can move back into the world. Now there is no problem. This is how one attains to the state of no mind. Nothing can distract him from his being. There is no power bigger than the power of no mind enough for now.